Thank you for having me. Um, this is a perfect opportunity. The New Year's, it's a new start a new beginning, there's new hopes, it's a new year. So it's a perfect opportunity to say, well, you know, I'm going to make a New Year's resolution. What kind of issues are more common in New Year's resolutions? Uh, well, everyone has all types of, you know, resolutions, whether it's uh, losing weight. A lot, you know, a lot of times people focus around health issues. So, for example, losing weight or finding someone to get married to, working on a relationship. Uh, maybe they want to move to a different state or a different area that they enjoy more. Maybe they want a new job. Maybe they want to have a baby. Um, we also have a lot of financial re resolutions. People want to make more money um, or they want to get more experience in their job. So a lot of times you, you take this time of year to make those uh, changes in your life. I think it's important, like I said, to break down your your larger goal so uh, you, know. you know I think people speak about it both ways I think you know everyone gets into what's your New Year's resolution what's your New Year's resolution you know but I think in reality people really want to make changes in their lives they really mean it and even though we speak about it lightly deep down inside we all want to be better people so you know the key is how to make the the right resolution for yourself and what's most important and then how you're going to go about take you know reaching those goals for about 12 years, uh, what is the best way to make New Year's resolution? Well, I think that the first thing is, is that when you think about the New Year, all kinds of thoughts come to your mind, right? You know, you have, there's probably you could say, like if I asked you, what's your, news, what's your New Year's resolution? What's your New Year's resolution? Uh, what's my New Year's resolution? Yes. Many. <laughs> many. You see, there you go, yeah. many. So let's say, you know, um, you know, we all have like maybe a, a goal that we want to reach in your career, a goal in your personal life, and a goal. So what I like to tell people is, you know, you know, you pick your goals and say if you had 10, then the first thing you want to do is prioritize because you're not going to be able to work on all 10 at the same time or maybe, you know, maybe you work on three, four, and prioritize them. And typically I say, well, why don't you pick like a, a goal in each aspect of your life? Maybe it's your career, your social life, your personal life. And pick one goal from each area. And after you've prioritized them and picked one in each area that are important to you, then the question is, how are you going to go about doing it? So oftentimes, you know, you, you make a goal, right? And then well, what's next? There's no step after that. You know, saying, you know, everyone, let's talk about, like, losing weight because that's a huge thing out there. So I want to lose weight. Well, okay, what are you going to do about it? Well, I want to lose weight. So that that's the problem that everybody runs into well, how are you going to do how are you going to go about that plan on losing weight so what you want to do is make a list i'm very big on lists and you want to prior you know suggest what are how am i going to lose weight am i going to join a gym what's the action plan join a gym find a buddy to walk with am i going to hire a dietitian to help me you know cook healthy am i uh, you know what are you going to do to reach that goal you know, join a, you know, do a fitness program every day, um, learn, buy a book on health. And then, the, then after you've made that action plan on how you're going to achieve that goal, then you have to put into play little baby steps on how you're going to get there. And say you're going to lose weight in six months and how much weight you want to lose and then developing goals on how to get there and then checking in with your calendar every day. What did I do today to reach my goal? And at the end of the night, I say to everybody, you know, check in with yourself. Did you achieve something that gets you closer to your goal? D you know, what, what, how did you get there? Did you do anything, something? Did you eat healthier today? Did you read something about, you know, you know, you don't have to be hard on yourself. And that's another issue that many people have. They, it's an all or nothing thing. You know, if either I'm going to lose all the weight, and, and if I ever break away from it, then I'm off my diet. You know, you have to give yourself a little leeway and, uh, you know, encouraging yourself to keep on track, even though you may, you know, backtrack a little bit. And so that's what I would uh, suggest to people. Let's pick, like, say, for example, you want a career in... Uh there's a strategy, there's a plan, you take steps, and you always have to have the end goal in mind and kind of work backwards so it fits into the plan. And uh, does everything have to be always that calculated? No, but you want to succeed in what you do. So oftentimes many people set themselves up for failure because they never create an action plan, they never you know, put it onto a time period so that they can follow it, so that they can reach their goal. And all of a sudden, by the, you know it, two months pass by. 
and you didn't lose any weight. Well, why? You know, because you didn't develop a plan that works, a plan that makes sense, a plan that's reasonable. And um, the other thing, you know, I, I think that's important is to focus on all the aspects of your life. And uh, what I practice is something called, I, that I developed is called Health IQ. It's a theory to health. And what the theory is, is that you have to look at all areas of your life. So, for example, if you want to lose weight, then you have to look at the five areas. And the five areas of Health IQ are psychological health, physical health, spiritual health, social health, and environmental health. So, practically speaking, let's say you want to lose weight. So, you have to look at the psychological issues. Why do you eat? Are you engaging in overeating or do you have an eating problem based on an emotional issue? Do you not know how to manage your stress so therefore you open the fridge every night and munch away? Um, do you, what are your outlets for managing your stress so that you don't turn to food? Then you look at your physical health. Are you exercising? Are you eating right? Um, that's pretty simple when it comes to food. Um, and then you look at your social health. Are you going to, are you with people that overeat? Are you with people that eat healthy or that eat not healthy? Uh, you know, what, what kind of activities do you engage in? You know, it's so funny today, we, you know, we're in a society where let's meet for lunch, let's meet for dinner, let's meet for breakfast, let's meet for lunch. So we have to move away from that. If you're trying to lose weight, it doesn't help going to like the cafe or, you know, at Starbucks and having, you know, three lattes every day. You, you have to put yourself in an environment that supports your goals. Let's just dance, for example. Exactly. Let's dance. Let's go see a movie. Let's do. Let's walk in the park. Let's go exercise. Let's let's do something fun that's healthy for you, but not around food. So mm -hmm. it, you go through the different areas of health to you do that. Apply uh, all these five areas in all kinds of New Year's resolutions. Exactly. If you have uh, addictions, it's helpful for that because you want to look. If you want to change your career, well. Uh, you know, or if you want to improve your relationship, um, if you, you know, everything that you look at in dealing with improving your lifestyle, you can apply the Health IQ model because that's the only way that you're going to actually be successful and achieve it. If you, if you put together a plan that looks at every area, so they work together and you can reach the goal successfully. How a person can decide uh, according to his or her uh, capacities? which New Year's resolution to use? Well, you know, that's a difficult question because I think everyone needs, like I said, you, you know, you, everyone has so many things they want to change. So, and then every year passes by and, you know, you had so many goals, did you actually do one of them? So, like I said, you have to develop a priority list and decide which goal is most important for you and decide on three. And then you have to look at what's the most important to you, what's the most vital to you, what's the most necessary to you. Like, you know, so, and, and then, of course, you have to be practical about it. Um, you may want to move to um, a new place of living, or, but you don't have the finances to do it. So then the priority would want to be, your goal would want to be, you know, to develop the finances. And then the secondary goal would be to start looking and moving to a better location, a better home, a better, putting your kids into a better school if that may be it. If it's a career change, you know, you have to take the steps that are realistic because if you don't take the steps and plan it out accordingly, then you won't reach the end goal because there's certain things that need to be in place in the beginning. And that's what's important about any goal that you set for yourself or anything that you set out to do is, you know, putting into place the necessary steps so that the ultimate goal is reached. Uh, you have been describing what to be succeed, succeeding, successful. Thank you. Successful. Thank you. But what happened when the person give up? Right. How manage the frustration? Well, you know, I, I think everybody goes through hard times, you know, and it's important that you have to keep your head up. And what I like to emphasize is that everybody goes through stress. And that's the common, common if you might say the bond that, that brings us all together, is that we all have ups and downs in life. Nobody is always at the top and no one's always at the bottom. But it's how you approach your life. It's how you approach your situation. It's how you approach every event in your life. Are you going to grow from it or are you going to give in to it? Are you going to let it get you down? Are you going to let it get the best of you? Or are you going to keep optimistic? Are you going to rise again and become better yet? And it's the attitude that you approach everything with. 
And of course, we all we all have bad habits. We all have you know things that we do in our lifestyle and behaviors that we may engage in that that are not great. Nobody's perfect. But then it's the question of of the importance of realizing what my negative traits are, what my bad habits are. And just by being aware of it, that when trouble hits or when stress hits, then you right away know what your downfall is going to be. So then you set up preventative steps so that it doesn't happen. So if you want to lose weight or you have an addiction or you have, um, you know, if you're trying to, you know, build your finances, but you love shopping. I mean, you know, you name it, there's so many things that you want to take better care of your health. You, if you already know your, your, your downfalls, and everybody knows them. Everyone can look in the mirror and say, you know, I, I know I do this, and I know I do this. It's just you, everyone pretends not to know, but everybody knows. So by knowing, that's the first step. Number two is putting into place steps that help you to avoid those pitfalls. So for example, if you overeat at night, so you want to change your environment. You don't want to keep fatty foods in the in the home. You know, you can't that's what I you have to look at every aspect of your life to succeed. And, you know, to to make yourself get there. And so you want to create an atmosphere that's conducive to whatever the goals that you're working on. And uh, you know, for example, you want to work on a relationship, on marriage. Well, if you never create the time for it, well, how are you going to work on it? You may have the best intentions in mind, and you may work on communication skills, but if you never have the time to sit down together and say, let's work on this, then how are you going to reach your goal? So that's what I mean about looking at the whole picture, is that you know, it's not going to work unless you set into place each and every important quality that needs to be there so that you can then move forward towards the goal. Okay, what is the magic pill <laughs> for people to get New Year's resolution? Well, the magic pill, I'd say, is uh, number one, following the health intelligence model, looking at the five areas of health so that you can succeed. And number two, I'd say, is don't give up. And number three, which is the most important, is to love yourself enough to not give up your the goals that you want to reach it's a key factor is loving yourself enough to give yourself time to make yourself important enough to reach those goals and to not give up on yourself thank you for having me